Hello everyone, my name is William and I'm an application engineer for GoEngineer. Today we're going to talk about the reverse engineering software VX model. Before I get into the live demo of the software, I want to give you some background information first. This software was created by Creaform. This is the GoEngineer partner in the 3D scanning industry. It's an add-in to the VX Element software, which is just used to capture scan data. VX model allows you to take that scan data and use it for reverse engineering. It's an entry-level software, so it's very simple and easy to use. And the best part is, it's compatible with SOLIDWORKS. There's a lot of things we can do with a mesh on VX model. For example, we can align it to the origin, we can merge multiple scans together, smooth the mesh, fill holes if we need to, clean mesh can find and fix issues like inverted triangles, Watertight remesh will try to give you the best watertight mesh while using a variety of fixing tools. And auto surface. This allows you to obtain a solid body from the mesh. You can even obtain a surface body from a part of the mesh. We can also obtain reference geometry, like measurements, cross sections, planes, cylinders, cones, spheres, lines, points, and all of this reference geometry can be transferred to SOLIDWORKS. This is the scan to CAD workflow for VX model. The first step in the process is to capture the scan data. We need to scan the part with a 3D scanner and obtain an STL mesh or a point cloud. We can import that into VX model. Here we can align the mesh and obtain reference geometry. Once we have that, we can import into SOLIDWORKS. Here we can use the reference geometry to create sketches and features. Also, we can make any design changes if necessary. And finally, we can send this to manufacturing, where we can create drawings, send this to a CNC machine, or a 3D printer. So now I'm going to give you a live demo of the software. This is VX Elements, so I'm going to click on the VX Model add-in and open an STL mesh. Select my units, and there's my mesh. Now, I want to point out a couple things about this file. First of all, it's not a complete scan. As you can see, there are holes in the mesh, and we did this on purpose. We wanted to show that you don't need a 100% watertight mesh for reverse engineering. If I zoom out, you'll also notice that this part is not aligned. It's floating in space. So we're going to use reference geometry to align it. The first thing I'm going to do is create some reference planes. So I'm going to click on the plane tool and VX model has these really cool selection tools. I'm going to use the one that's called similar normal. So I'm going to click in this area and the software is going to calculate every triangle that has a similar normal to the one that I picked. I'm going to hit create and I'm going to make two more planes using the same method. I want to align the x-axis normal to this plane, the y-axis normal to this plane, and the z-axis normal to this plane. To get a better alignment, I need a point to establish an origin. So I'm going to create a line from the intersection of these two planes, then I'm going to create a point from the intersection of that line and the bottom plane. I'm going to click on the line tool and select my two planes. It gives me a preview. I'm going to hit create. Now I can click on the point tool, select line and plane intersection. I'm going to select my line and the plane that I want to intersect. It gives me a preview and I can hit create. The reason I chose this area for the origin is because it appears to be a 90 degree corner. But, how do we know for sure? We can take an angle measurement and confirm. You can select the planes that you want to check. And as you can see, we're pretty close there, there, and even there. So I think it's safe to say it's a 90 degree corner, which makes it perfect for the origin. Now we have all the necessary elements for an alignment. We can click on Align to Origin and I want to align the z-axis normal to plane 1, the y-axis 
normal to plane 2 and the origin will be the point I created. We can also flip the normals to achieve the desired alignment. And the alignment is now complete. Now that we're aligned to the origin, we can delete these features. We just needed them for alignment reference. Now we can start creating our cross sections. I'm going to start off with the main body of the part. So I can click on cross section and I'm going to select the XY plane as my base plane and I'm going to offset this three millimeters. I can click on preview. If I like the polyline that I'm going to get from this, I can hit create. This cross section gives me enough information to create the main body of the part. However, when I bring this into SolidWorks, it's not going to be a blind extrusion. The reason is this top area here is curved. So I need to create a surface out of that area so I can extrude up to. So I'm going to create a single patch auto surface. I'm going to use my selection tools, only this time I'm going to select sudden change. I'm going to click on this area and I'm going to say preview so it can make a surface out of that area. If I'm happy with that surface, which looks like here, we got a really good surface out of that top area. I can go ahead and hit create. I don't need this surface visible at the moment, so I'm just going to go ahead and hide it. Now I can create the rest of my cross sections. I need reference geometry for all of the flat areas. However, they're at different heights, so I'm going to add a plane to each of those sections. That way, when I bring this into SolidWorks, I know exactly where the cut starts. So I'm going to click on the plane tool. Only this time, I'm going to set a constraint normal to the z-axis. This will make sure that all my planes are parallel. My selection tool automatically changes to similar normal. I'm going to click here for my first plane, second plane, third plane, and fourth plane. Now we're ready for the next cross section. Only this time, I'm going to select plane 1 as my base plane. And I'm also going to select 6 millimeters as my offset. That way I have enough reference geometry from all of the cutout sections. Now we just have to create the cylinder and cone features. And this is pretty quick. VX model can extract solid bodies from these shapes. So I'm going to click on the cylinder tool. It automatically changes my selection tool to similar curvature. So I'm just going to click on a point. It gives me a preview of the cylinder. Now, if I want this cylinder to be nice and vertical, I'm going to make it normal to the z-axis. Hit Create, Close. Now I'm going to click on the Cone tool. I'm going to click here. It gives me a preview of the cone. And I'm also going to make this normal to the z-axis. I'm also going to create a reference plane so I can modify these features in SolidWorks. That way I know the exact height. The last thing I'm going to do is click on the sphere tool so I can create the top sections of these features. And this part has all of the reference geometry necessary for SolidWorks. Please be sure to check out part 2 of this video where I show you how to take that reference geometry and recreate the part using SolidWorks. Thank you for watching.